Welcome to tutorial one on how to compute in MATLAB. The goals of this tutorial are to introduce you to the MATLAB programming environment, as well as get you used to using the command window as a calculator, namely how to add, subtract, multiply, divide, um, define variables, and how to define vectors and matrices. Hello, welcome to MATLAB. Uh, this is the MATLAB programming environment you see that there's multiple different boxes around the screen. In the middle we have what's called the command window. And this is the window that's very much like a calculator screen. We can do the basic operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, even modular arithmetic. We can define new variables. We can define vectors, matrices, do all operations on those. And on the right hand side we have what's called the workspace. And the workspace will list all the variables as well as their values that we're defining over in the command window. The command window can also be used for calling in functions and scripts that we write and these would all be found in the current folder. And the current folder is where we would save presumably all of our scripts that we're interested in running. And you can see the pathway or the directory of your current folder by looking up at this top bar that says users, it has my name, I'm in Dropbox, numerical analysis, then the MATLAB practice folder. And it's currently empty because we have not created any scripts together. So let's practice just um, doing a few operations in the command window. First we can do just things like a calculator would, something like 2 plus 3. And upon hitting enter, we see we get the answer equals 5, or what's called this variable, ans equals 5. We could likewise do something, um, just multiplication, 2 times 3, and now we have this answer equals 6, or this variable, ans equals 6. And if we look at this right-hand side in the workspace, we have this variable name, ans, and its value is 6. And MATLAB will also in any, like any programming language, will also operate under the um, presumed correct order of operations. So we could do something like 2 minus 1 times 5 divided by 11, and it would do this in the correct order of operations using PEMDAS. And you would get your answer. And now since we have a new answer, this variable ans has changed, and if we check the right-hand side in the workspace, that uh, value is also different. Now we can define a lot of variables, per, as many as we want in fact, and the way we do that is just very simply if we want to define a as a variable we can just give a a value, a equals 2. And on, now we have this variable a equals 2, we check the workspace, we see a variable named a, its value is 2. We can equally just change this to a equals 3, and now its value is changed. We can call this variable just by clicking or typing a and clicking enter and we see a equals 3. We can do other things too where we define a new variable say b in terms of a. We could just say b equals 2 times a minus 1 or b equals 5 and that also shows up in the workspace. Similarly we can also define another variable c in terms of both a and b say 5 times a plus 2 times b. c equals 25 and it also shows up over in our workspace. Now we can do other things too where we clear variable names if we want to redefine it or we can just go ahead and redefine it likewise. So we could just say c equals 7 and that will automatically change c's value to 7. Like I said before we can also define matrices or vectors. First let's begin with some vectors. Now before we start defining vectors and matrices, you can see that our cursor is at the bottom of the screen. We can do some things like just hitting enter or return. We can get more lines on the screen. If we just hit the up arrow on our keyboard, we can get a list of the previous values that we've used and go back to any one of them. So say we wanted to redefine A, we can go ahead and just kind of curse over it click to the right and we can just say a equals 4. Now remember where we redefined b already in terms of a but if we just say what is b? b is still the previous value that we defined before based on the previous value of a so b is still 5. 
So let's clear the screen before we do anything else. To clear the screen in MATLAB or this command window, we can just type CLC and enter, and that just gets rid of all the previous lines in the command window. Now if you look over to the right, the workspace still contains all the values of the variables that we've previously defined. We've just cleared the screen of the command window. Okay, so now let's define some vectors. So the way we can define vectors in this is with square brackets. So like so, let's just call vector one v, and say v is equal to left square bracket, one, two, three, and then right square bracket. Now if we hit enter, we see v looks like a row vector. And we can do lots of things to v. We can ask what is the first component of v, MATLAB starts indexing at 1 and not 0. So v1 is 1, the second component of v is of v2 is 2, and v3 is of course 3. Likewise, we can redefine v in terms of itself if we wanted to and say v is equal to 2 times v, let's say. And again, we can do the same things and ask what are the components of v, v2 is now 4, and that type of thing. Let's clear the screen. So remember, let's define another vector, say w, w is equal to um, 1, 4, 7, let's say, and we still have v in the background, as we can see from either just typing in what is v into the command window or looking again in the workspace. And we can do lots of things to v and w. We could ask, we could, could define a new vector, say z, and say z is equal to the uh, sum between v and w. In doing that, we see it adds vectors like we should. Uh, components 1 add together, components 2, components 3. And well, of course, we could define, let's say, z as the difference between both vectors, v and w, and it does the same thing. Now, say we want to take the dot product between vectors v and w. What we can do first is ask, well, what is a dot product? It's almost like multiplication of vectors, but if we just naively type v, times w, we get a MATLAB error, an error that says inner matrix dimensions must agree because we're trying to multiply a 1 by 3, a one by three vector by a 1 by 3 vector. So one of these vectors we need to transpose. So how do we transpose vectors in MATLAB or matrices for that matter? Well, it's super easy. All we need to use is an apostrophe. So if we type v apostrophe, that'll now give us the column vector or the transpose of v. So if we want to take the dot product of v and w, we just have to type v times w apostrophe to give us that transpose of w. Click enter and we get 60. Now if we try the reverse w times v apostrophe, we get the same thing. Before we start talking about matrices, let's just clear our screen. So if we want to talk about matrices now, we can define matrices in a few different ways. We could kind of put a couple vectors together to create a matrix, or we could just define a matrix outright. So let's define a matrix A. To do this, we're again going to use the square brackets. So left square bracket. So you want to take, a, just make a, a two by two matrix, one, two, three, four. So the top row, we want one space two, and then we put a semicolon to say that's the end of that row, and then three and four to say that's the next row in the matrix. Now if we do the right square bracket and click enter, we see we get our matrix one, two, three, four, or a two by two matrix. And again, we can call the components of this matrix as we want. We can say what is A, one, two, and that gives us two. Or what is A, two, one, and that will give us three. We can now go ahead and define, say, a second matrix B. And let's just do make B similar, another two by two, say, a five, six, semicolon, seven, eight, for the matrix five, six, seven, eight. And now, just like we did with vectors, we can add, subtract these two matrices, say C is equal to A plus B, enter. Now, the thing that I've kind of glossed over were, we're using capital letters to call matrices. These, of course, are just arbitrary variable names, but you can definitely see if we 
are calling our matrix capital A, we still have our variable little a defined as just the value 3. Of course, we called the matrix uh, large or capital A as we could have just used the lowercase a if we wanted to, say d is equal to 4, 5, 8, 9. There's no arbitrary convention for the way you define your variables. Let's just go ahead and clear the screen, CLC, enter. Now MATLAB is very powerful because we can just call matrix inversion. So for example, if we just ask, what is the inverse of A? There's built-in MATLAB functions, INV for inverse, and then left parenthesis, the matrix you want to take the inverse of, right parenthesis. If we just type that out, it finds the inverse of A. So of course, if we did A times inverse of A, excuse me, capital A times inverse of A, we just get the identity matrix. Now MATLAB also has a built-in identity matrix, very cleverly named I, E, Y, E, and then if we just type in parentheses the size, it'll give us the corresponding identity matrix. So here's a two by two. If we type in five by five or five, we get the five by five identity as well. So let's go ahead and clear the screen real fast. And now on that note, just like we saw with the inverse function in MATLAB, MATLAB has a lot of built-in functions. We can look at the sine, cosine of many numbers, exponentials of whatever we want. Um, there are a lot, a lot of built-in functions, and we can search for different helps. So for example, what makes MATLAB also very powerful, if we're confused with how to use one of these built-in functions, say the inverse function, we can just type help, then INV for that function. Clicking enter. It'll bring up a help window that describes what this function does and kind of what data to put into it as well. And of course, you can Google all these things as well, which is also very helpful. Now let's just look at three other built-in MATLAB functions. The first function is called RAND, R-A-N-D. So if we just type RAND and say parentheses 5, what does this give us? It gives us a 5 by 5 matrix of random numbers between 0 and 1. And the reason why I'm doing this is, well, let's define another random matrix, say rand 4 by 4. So we just type rand 4. Okay, we defined our big A now as this. We can call specific vectors, either column or row vectors of A if we'd like. So for example, if we want to say, I want the first row of A, I can type 1, comma, colon, and says I want that full uh, dimension and parentheses and this will give us the first row of A. Likewise we could have called this the third row of A. Or if we reverse the order we can start calling columns. So if we want columns we use the colon first for that index and then we can just say let's grab the second column and MATLAB will give that to us as well. Okay, let's go ahead and clear the screen. Now one more function of RAND that a lot of these matrix and vector uh, built-in functions have are, say we want to define V again, but we want it to be just a random row vector. We can say, well, that let's just put one, a comma, and now the length of that row vector, let's say eight. So now we'll have a row vector that size one by eight, and be, fulfilled, and be filled with just random numbers between 0 and 1. And this is a very strong uh, tool in MATLAB. Just uh, similar to the RAND function, we can define a matrix or a vector of zeros just by saying, say, z equals zeros, 3, and that will give us a matrix of zeros. Or we can say something similar equals zeros, this time let's make a column of zeros, maybe of length of length 3, 3, 1, and now we have a column of zeros. And there's also a similar function for creating ones. If we do say t equals ones of 4, this will give us a matrix 4 by 4 of just ones. Or likewise, we can just make a vector, say ones, 1 comma 5 for a vector of length, a row vector of length 5, just full of 1s. So this type of stuff can be useful if we want to create, say, a vector of all the value 
2.5. So we could do something like t equals 2.5 times 1's parenthesis 1 comma 5 and now we have a vector of 2.5's rather than having to type in 2.5 five times into a square uh, brackets. So let's go ahead and uh, clear the screen one more time. And the last thing we'll cover in this tutorial today is just like we said, well, I want to create a vector or a matrix of all 2.5s or all 1s or all zeros. What if I want to create a vector of the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to 10? Of course, we could do something where we manually type it in 1, 2, 3, 4, but that can get pretty tiring, especially if we're starting to make some vectors that go all the way to 1,000 or etc. So of course, you can type enter. Now we have that vector that we just wanted, but we can do something else that's much more clever. Say if we do v equals 1, we can say colon 1 colon 10. And what this says for MATLAB is create a vector starting at the value 1, which is given by the left one, indexed by ones, so create, keep iterating in value by one each time all the way till we get to 10. So if we click enter, we have that same vector, but it's written in a much more easy fashion. So for example, we could do the same thing. Let's do another test, say t equals, let's start at two this time, and let's jump up by fives until we get to, say, 17. Clicking enter, we get then the vector two, seven, 12, 17. And this type of thing is very useful if you're trying to create a vector that's very large or if we know that we want to create some type of grid points that are equally spaced for testing. Similarly, we can get this a little more complicated. We can do things like, let's just create another arbitrary vector, say x, and we can say this can go by 0 0.1 and we can create something that's very large. Maybe it goes up by 0.01 all the way till we get to one. And clicking enter, we get a lot, a large, large mess. And of course, this says columns um, one through 91 because of course this is a row vector. But if we just say, well, what is x transpose? Looking at the transpose of x, well, that's the vector as we'd expect it to be in a much more kind of easy to read fashion. So I hope this was a helpful introduction to MATLAB. The next lesson will kind of go over how to do scripting.